I really wanted to do Charlie Don't Surf by The Clash here with the Huey sound chopping overhead, but I couldn't find it. Hi guys, welcome again to the Cast Iron Man Cooking Show, where today we will be doing a very fun and exciting breakfast sausage. But not just any breakfast sausage, it's going to be my custom blend of spices with uh, maple syrup in it. to Give it that classic sweet and salty breakfast sausage taste. And it's a lot of fun. It is so much different than buying it in a store. And it is actually pretty simple to do once you get all of the details right throughout the process. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. It is a time-consuming process. And at one point, you're going to want to have somebody help you handle and make your sausages. But what else are you going to do? What are you going to do? Uh, just play video games all day or watch a Steve Martin master class oh my god give me a break let's just make some sausage here so I have hacked up a similar cut of pork on this YouTube channel before I'm not going to bore you guys with the details surrounding that uh, again I'm just going to bore you to death with some other details and that mostly revolves around the amount of content regarding sausage making that is available. Um, I messed up my Italian sausage the first time I ever made it. The texture was completely wrong, and when you bit into it, it was thoroughly obvious, although people still had the inclination to lie to my face that it was good. Um, it was very bad. So when that happens to me when I cook something, I basically completely go nuts and try to figure out what went wrong, how it went wrong by consuming as much content as possible. And that's what I did for sausage making. But in regards to sausage making, there's a lot of just flat out contradictory information. And I'm just going to tell you a couple of the errors that I think that I made and have thus amended. And I've been able to achieve a really great quality and great textured sausage. You don't need to freeze your grinding equipment. A lot of people call for that, but it doesn't make any sense because if you just have your pork really cold in the freezer for about an hour, hour and a half beforehand where it's on the point of ice crystals uh, forming on the flesh, your grinder will be cold the first pass through of cubes of meat. And in regards to the cubes of meat, you want them to be pretty small. I Don't cut strips. You could try, maybe... Maybe it's not the strip variable, but I think that the strips did not help me in terms of my grinding. So I've cut really small cubes when I do it this time around and, and every other time I've done it around and, and succeeded at it. Um, and like I just mentioned first was the freezing, right? Okay, so the freezing, you have to be patient with it. You have to freeze the pork at a couple of the stages, mainly this one right here where we're going to just do bulk and then season it and freeze it. And then the second time is going to be when you finish the first most wide grind of the sausage meat. So after we have cut all the pork into small pieces, we're going to start seasoning it. And what I do is season it with about 1.6% of total gram weight of the sausage that is in the bowl. Um, we did it one time and we did what some people recommend, which is 2%. And it was, in my opinion, it was all, way too much. For my mom, it was way too much. Forget it. I mean, so I got to cater to her instantaneously. So I, I significantly pulled back on the salt content. And the rest of the spices are what I would consider good for a breakfast sausage, and I'm going to include them in the description below because the first time I actually weighed them was here. Um, and I'm, I'm seasoning about five pounds of pork here, but the I've never I've never weighed them before or even measured them because I just when I'm seasoning something for the first time, I don't even. Except for the salt, I think that that's super important, obviously, like, you know, in terms of using a ratio, but also other stuff, I just eyeball and use my best sense, my best cooking sense to decide how much I want of each ingredient. And, you know, honestly, like, yeah, this might not be the best way to go about it. And that's why I'm going to provide you guys with what I think is this great master blend of breakfast sausage seasoning. But in terms of eyeballing it, this is one of the only 
skills that I actually was born with. Um, I think it's only one of the only talents I have, if it even is a talent. Like, I don't think, you know, it's not up there with like Mickey Mantle's talents, but it's, it's okay. Once you have all your spices in the bowl, go ahead and mix the pork pieces together really thoroughly so that everything's well coated. And we're going to put this in the freezer for about an hour and a half and get it to that crystallized point where there's just some ice on the surface. Make sure your saran wrap is like glass on top too. After that, what I like to do is weigh out the maple syrup. I'm going to add at the emulsification stage or the, after the second grind and just chill that down in the fridge while all this is happening. Okay, so here we are. We're 90 minutes later and we've got our pork. As you can see, it's, it's really... There's some uh, ice forming on the outside of the bowl. And what you see the setup I have here is I have the bowl that's very cold that was in the freezer on the side. I have the most wide grinding die on the mixer and grinder attachment. And I have another stainless steel bowl which is sitting in a reservoir of ice water to receive the breakfast sausage. Uh, this is super important. It's not something I did on the first time. So I guess we'll never know if it's the most important variable. But I again, I think that this is probably uh, one of the better uh, consistencies and textures I was able to create. So that's why I, at every step, just try to maintain the temperature of the meat. If you look at that grinding head, you can see that all the condensation is forming on the outside. And that's what I was talking about, not needing to freeze the actual components because it just gets cold on the first pass through. Do your best to just kind of keep plunging the meat down into the grinding head. And once it's all done, you can pass some bread through to get the excess that's all caught in the worm, which or the I mean, I call it an auger, but it's technically called a worm. But pass some old bread through just so you can uh, get it all out. It's easier to clean. Cover it up and we're going to put it back in the freezer for probably another hour and a half or so. And while that's going on, you can retain a little bit of the pork that you just ground. So you could make a patty uh, and taste test it to see if you would actually need to add any sort of seasoning going forward. I've made this recipe before, so that wasn't my concern. I'm kind of just doing this for show purposes and eating purposes. But what you're gonna to wanna to do is use some oil in a stainless steel pan um, just to get the most pure interpretation of the flavor. That being said, I not like I used neutral oil or anything, I used olive oil. So um, we just fry this up because, you know, it's actually interesting to experiment with the grind. I mean, you could, you could technically fill the sausage with this uh, gauge of grind, but it would, uh, yeah, it would just be a little bit different, not what we're going for here. And feel free to experiment. Clearly, many people are experimenting on YouTube in terms of what's right and what's wrong about sausage making. Let's check out these hog casings that we're going to need for the final fill of our sausage. Um, I bought these on Amazon because uh, not a lot of local places have them, and when you buy them from a butcher shop, they usually just throw them in a plastic bag. And it's kind of like, I, I mean, I wouldn't call it an inconvenience. Probably, honestly, they like when you order them because they, it's, it's more of a rare thing that people get. So they're like, yeah, this guy's into it. Sweet. Like somebody, somebody gets it out there. But I didn't do that this time. I, I actually liked it better when I did that because I think that the guys had soaked the casings for a significantly longer period of time. Not like I did, which was not overnight because I forgot I was making this video or, you know, I forgot something because... It's, I mean, I, I can walk into a room for one reason, and I immediately have no idea why I'm standing in that room, which I don't know if that bodes well for my future self, but it is what it is. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm just rinsing the casings off very thoroughly. It comes with a lot of crystallized salt on it, so you want to get all of that off, and then just kind of try to start putting some water through the actual casing itself to, to loosen up the interior of it. We're using warm water to rinse it and dissolve that salt that's located all inside and outside the sausage casing. Um, and just keep rinsing and emptying and rinsing and emptying and let it just sit in the container until you are ready to use it. 
but more preferably, I guess, overnight, even though the directions on the back of the package call for, I think, 30 to 45 minutes of soaking. I just want to take this opportunity to show you guys the dyes we use, which were the thick and the thinnest one that we're going to be using for grinding the sausage. Okay, so now we are on the second grind with that second die I was showing you, which is pretty small, and the meat is really cold again. And this is where the process begins to become a little trickier because when you plunge it down, as you're seeing here, it's, well, it's easy to beginning, but then, uh, and I don't know if this is unique to this particular sausage grinder and the uh, plunger, but it is, should I call this a muddler? I feel like a muddler makes it sound more uh, appetizing in the long run. Whatever, let's just call it a plunger. And so you take the plunger and then as you're pressing it in, what happens is the fat begins to slide around the outside of that plastic piece and create a very strong vacuum seal. So you have to continuously work down the sides and even maybe stand on a little tiny bathroom stool or something like that just so you can see where the sausage is relative to the auger at the bottom. Um, and how much progress you're making because this thing will stick a significant amount and if you're doing this like five pounds like I have here with the KitchenAid it does take a little while to get it all through but as you see it's a really nice consistency almost like you would see uh, chopped meat in a store or a, a supermarket or a butcher shop and of course you can you can just do that as well you can make your own burger blends uh, which we will do in a video because it's a lot of fun and it tastes significantly better and it's super customizable and as you see the progress that's up that's real time so that's about as fast as it's gonna go and here I'll show you the whole thing what I'm talking about with in terms of the vacuum see how the fat is kind of going around the sides of the plunger that all that does is all the air moves out and the gap just gets filled with uh, pork so it is slow and what you want to do is you want to never push the plunger all the way to the bottom because you'll need to get then you'll definitely need to get on a stool and pull the whole thing out so we're done grinding our meat and we're going to move on to soaking our casing more and, and doing our final preparation for filling now uh it's been soaking long enough that i can fill the casing and begin to work the water through both sides and that's all I want to do is continuously try to just work the water through, work the water through and sling it back and forth so that we have a nice, well-rinsed, neutral sausage case casing. Um, because these do have a little bit of a smell when they, I mean, I mean, it's intestines, right? What, what, like at the same time, what do you expect? I didn't, I didn't pop open the Ziploc top of these babies and think I was going to smell daisies. Um... So just do your best to thoroughly rinse these before you're ready to go and you're ready to fill. But before we fill, we obviously need to make the filling. And what I have here is a full squirt bottle full of water that I have frozen for about an hour. So it's not a, a total brick, but it's really cold ice water. And then I put the syrup in the freezer uh, when the second freeze of the meat occurred. So... All those ingredients to my right uh, are very frigid. And what you're going to do now is you're going to emulsify the fat that is in the uh, pork meat and bring it together so that it's really super, super tacky. Uh, you don't want to over mix it. And as you mix, you can add water as you, you think fit. You add the syrup in is going to provide a little bit of moisture content. But you want to make sure that those, like I said, those ingredients are cold and frigid. And I'm, and you could at this point wear a cotton glove with a nitrile glove on top because it's real. I mean, it'll feel like you have frostbite almost when you're done mixing this if you don't wear any glove. But I don't wear any glove because, well, primarily because I should have my head examined, but also because the tactile sense you have of interacting with the meat and feeling w at what stage it's at is much harder to do through two layers of protective gloves and this process reminds me a lot of kneading uh, bread but what I found is it's very similar to the way that I bring together meatball uh, ground meat so just keep working it working it working it and 
I think another mistake I made the first time was I actually used the KitchenAid to uh, mix this, which applied too much mechanical friction and pressure. So now it's only going to be hand done from now on. It's never going to be done with the kitchen. Maybe we'll do it with the KitchenAid again just to see if that was the mistake. But you're going to want a super tacky product. And I mean, don't over mix it, but they say that about dough. But how hard is that to do? It's like super hard to do. So here I have my five pound sausage stuffer, which I bought after I decided that another variable that kind of messed us up the first time was the attachment, uh, the KitchenAid attachment filling horn. I felt like there was too much mechanical uh, friction applied once again in that portion of the filling process that the fat was allowed to melt and get too warm and it contributed to the poor quality of the sausage texture. So I bought this on Amazon and you know if you're not doing a lot of this then that might seem unnecessary but I really do think it makes a huge difference in terms of the end product. Uh, one thing I will say about this particular sausage stuffer is that horn there um, is tough with the plastic. It's it's kind of hard to feed the casings on. And I have a kind of a kooky setup here with the C-clamps, but there's no counter in my house that would allow for the clamps that came with the sausage stuffer to be applied. So wet your horn and do your best to feed the casing on and not snag it, not tear it open. Um, I think I'm going to, like I said, get some metal attachments for this if they do have them online because the plastic is a little tough to work with. Um, also be cognizant of how much air you're getting inside of that casing and on the horn because that will interfere with your filling process. So just make sure that you're working all the larger air bubbles out um, because it'll create a huge gap that will then you might have to just unravel some of the casing. Tie off the very end with a knot or two and then leave a tiny little air gap in so that the sausage can enter uh, and have some space rather than just meet the knot immediately upon being filled. And if you have someone at home who is willing to help you with this, just go ahead and enlist their services because you it's hard to manage the sausage entering the casing and the air bubbles and the turning of the mechanism all at once so i would just at this point yeah ask somebody to help you out or just go slower because as you can see here there's see there's some air entering the casing and i'm gonna have to pop that and form it better um i made a couple different sizes of sausage because it uh wanted to see how cook times work and what what people preferred if they wanted a small uh chipinata style <laughs> or a big hefty breakfast sausage so I just kept filling and man this thing goes really fast honestly this crank style and I think it allows for a much smoother entry into the casing rather than the KitchenAid attachment um, and really it's just a matter of feel you're going to need to do this a couple times and just to get a idea of how to control the flow um, you're going to need to see as you I was using the poultry shears to tap on the horn and kind of release some of that air. It's all a bunch of tricks you need to learn as you go. And you do have to do this a couple times when before you get it really, really down pat, as with anything. I mean, that's just the way, you know, labor works. It's just the specialization of labor, you know. One, one person can't make a bunch of pins in a day, but a bunch of people can make thousands of pins in a day, you know. So, or maybe you don't, maybe you don't, uh, you know know anything about the wealth of nations uh, I don't this is look we're talking about sausage making here right still I think we are yeah once you get to the end of that casing go ahead and tie it off and leave a little bit more room because we're gonna need to uh, create some links so those links need to be tied and you're gonna lose that space in the uh, twisting process so a little space at the end of each tube and casing that you make uh, at, you could see that I was using the completely inappropriate knife at the beginning of that to try to get rid of, rid of some of those larger air bubbles. Uh, just use a pin. I couldn't find a pin. There was no one home to tell me where a pin would be. And just under my wrist, you can see that there's a probably a blowout where I poked a hole too large in the sausage casing. So it happens, and it's really not even that big of a deal because it's your... It just doesn't matter if you're not trying. Look at all that other sausage you have that you can present nicely. That one right there, you could probably just take out and 
you know, form into a patty or something like that, or just eat it like that. It really, don't worry about it if you mess it up on the first or 10,000th time because it's going to happen invariably. So we're finally there. We've got about as much as we can get out and the rest is kind of just going to be, it could be turned into a patty or, you know, it's if it's sitting out on the counter for a while, maybe you don't want to use that. Again, I'm using the wrong tool to poke the air holes out at the very end. But, um, you know, like I said, it's all I had. I had raw pork all over my hands and I did the best I could. But they serve, you know, they sell sausage prickers and, uh, you know, safety pin obviously would work. So just either you can leave it just all long like that and coiled up or you can twist it into links of varying sizes or equal sizes. Uh, just make sure with each link you twist in the opposite direction you did in relation to the former link. So there I have three really hefty ones and I'm just going to continue to make my way through the other ropes of sausage. And after this is all done, you aren't going to want to prepare this immediately. What you're going to want to do is get a fresh sheet pan, put it on the fresh sheet pan, and then put it in a refrigerator uncovered so it can dry out overnight. Uh, this is another thing that we did not do the first time we made the sausage, but upon doing it the second time, again, it's hard to isolate that as the exact cause. It's definitely not the cause of what the texture was the first time, but um, it is a variable that we think helped make a higher quality product at the very end. So now we've reached the end, my friends, of this sausage making excursion, this epic sausage making video, a deep cut, if you will. And if you have any comments or questions uh, or want to start a dialogue about what you think would be a better preparation of the sausage, please feel free to do so. I don't even need to tell you that. You are obviously entitled to voice your opinion in the comments section. But until we see each other again, probably in a biscuits and gravy video or something like that, uh, I appreciate you joining me. Happy sausage making, guys, and ultimately, be well.